Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a PhD student at MIT and the Broad Institute. I'll be leaving the next hour. And so the next hour we have coming up are three pre-recorded spotlight talks followed by three live contributed talks. And so we are going to just jump right in. We need to the spotlight talks. There we go. All right, enjoy. Hello, I'm Jan Kroth Zemeski. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Cambridge. And I'm presenting our work, Self-Supervised Learning of Phenotypic Representations from Cell Images with Weak Labels. And this is a collaboration between the University of Cambridge and AstraZeneca. And here are the great scientists on screen who have contributed to this work. We are working in the field of image-based profiling, uh, especially on this end, where we have images, uh, fluorescent stain microscopy images, and we're looking to extract um, and learn meaningful profiles or phenotypic representations from these cells um, to perform downstream tasks. Um, and we're using the BBC 21 set, which has been used uh, extensively for, with many models. And the key thing here is that there are 103 unique treatments, 38 compounds, and 12 distinct mechanisms of action. So here are the channels. And there have been many approaches uh, taken on this data set, um, classical approaches such as cell profiler, transfer learning algorithms, um, but I want to talk about the weekly supervised learning, where the weak labels, I think treatment labels, were used as, as, um, as, a, as a classifier network, and then there was a, an embedding taken out of that, which was then used for downstream prediction, and that was quite successful. Uh, more recently, there have been unsupervised and self-supervised approach, uh, approaches, which are also very successful. Um, and here's one example of those, um, where there's uh, single cell crops, actually, um, with a contrastive learning framework. But we wanted to move away from single cell cropping and see if we could do this on image level, because uh, there have been some studies that have done that with sort of multi-scale approaches. And uh, we actually found uh, what well, we sort of settled upon this algorithm, which is Dino from Caron. And uh, we, we chose this for two properties that it has. Um, the first property is, as you can see in the top left, uh, very strong segmentation properties. Um, and in the bottom left, it's also very good at clustering based on the features extracted from this network. And so we thought that it make it a good candidate for this sort of problem. And here's, example, here's an example of it, sort of clustering ImageNet classes, um, obviously much, much, much more uh, different data than what we're using. Uh, how does it work? Well, um, it takes uh, sort of global, which is the red box, global crops from the image, and it takes local crops, which are the yellow boxes from the image, and um, it sort of has two networks which sees different uh, sets of these crops and different augmentations, and then it sort of learns to maximize the, the agreement between these, um, these, two, uh, these two networks. So it's sort of learning, it's sort of a, a similar to a contrastive learning sort of approach. Um, it's a, not a knowledge distillation approach. And um, yeah, here's an example of, of us using it on, um, on the cell data. And we thought, well, how can we sort of adapt this to incorporate the, this weak label information that has been shown to actually, um, you know, enhance these features that we could learn? And uh, we came up with weekly supervised Dino or WS Dino, and uh, we basically take the global crops from one image, and then we take the local crops from a different image uh, of the same weak label class, and that could be uh, same treatment, same compound, um, even same batch. Really, it's up to you, up to you which you which you choose. Um, and uh, yeah, we kind of wanted to retain the benefits of the powerful self-supervised learning approach, but also incorporate implicitly these labels. Um, and, and we formulate this mathematically in the paper, but, but here it is, it's two large crops and, and, and eight small crops. And uh, we extract features from this network that we train, we actually fine tune, um, and uh, the clustering properties are really good. And um, you can see here, these are the 103 treatments sort of aggregated and then um, plotted, and there are only a couple of them are misclassified, and uh, these are known outliers in the in the data set. So yeah, we use sort of not same compound and not same common batch matching, which are essentially one nearest neighbor algorithms to um, in, in feature space using cosine distance, uh, very accepted metrics in this um, data set. And uh, we, we, we get the best performance using compound as the weak label. And we think the reason for this is that the compound uh, sort of covers multiple batches, uh, whereas the treatment doesn't. So maybe this has some sort of batch correction property, which could be really useful in other data sets. We also use the mechanism as a weak label, even though technically it's the strong label, just to, as a proof of concept, and that does it incredibly well. 
Uh, so compared to existing work, we, we perform state-of-the-art um, sort of level of results and uh, without using single cell augmentation, which is generally the best performing results before us did. Um, and we also can show that using attention maps that we're learning structurally meaningful features. Um, this is a property of the vision, vision transformer backbone of the network, uh, which I didn't have time to talk about, sadly. Thanks for listening. Here's the great team. And if you want to know more about this work, scan the QR code and you'll see everything you need.